Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is, what is Playwright and should you be using it? First off, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I make tons of QA videos to help you on your journey. Now back to the video. Every couple of years, a new automation tool is made to compete with Selenium. Today's tool, Playwright, which is a framework for web testing and automation. In this video will talk about what is Playwright, the pros and cons of Playwright, and should you be using Playwright. What is Playwright? Playwright is still very new. I believe the first official release was back in like 2020. It was built by Microsoft, a huge company, and has a Node.js library. Playwright enables end-to-end -end testing for modern web applications and supports many major browsers as well as programming languages. By default, Playwright launches a headless browser, meaning a user interface will not be displayed. Because of this, you must use command line. You can change your setting to run in a headed mode to show your browser. Playwright is free and open source. That means after this video, you can download it and start using it today. It comes with native integration out of the box. It has Docker images, which allow you to run tests in isolated environments. For each test, Playwright creates a browser context, which is equivalent to a new profile. This further helps with test isolation and is done very fast. So every new automation tool has their own little gimmicks to separate them from other tools. Playwright is no different. Playwright's capabilities are pretty interesting though. To help avoid tests being unreliable, Playwright has auto wait, which enables it to wait for elements to be actionable instead of using hard timeouts in your tests. With the assertions, checks are retried automatically until the necessary conditions are met. If you do predict tests being possibly flaky, you can configure a strategy for retrying tests as well as capture screenshots and videos of the test execution using the trace viewer. An underrated part of Playwright is code gen. People have mixed reviews about it. Some people love it, some people don't, but it's still something to talk about. Code gen is this test generator that you can use right out the box to record tests. You can also emulate different devices while using this tool, such as an iPhone 13, which will set the appropriate viewport size. You can then save these tests to any of the supported programming languages. Now for debugging tests, Playwright offers the Playwright Inspector. The Playwright Inspector is a GUI tool that helps debug the scripts. It opens a browser, highlights the selectors, and lets you stud through each line of your code that is in your test. If you want to find new selectors on the page while debugging, they offer an explore button to help you out. Since its release, Playwright has been used by many developers as well as testers, and has gotten more popular every year. In all honesty, I feel Playwright is actually faster than Selenium but because Playwright is so newer, it has a smaller user base and community compared to Selenium. It also supports less browsers and programming languages compared to Selenium. Because of these reasons, some companies and people stick to Selenium and may not go with Playwright. But I'll get into that more with the pros and cons next. So not our pros and cons. There are definitely a lot more pros than cons, but let's go through the list. Pros, built-in capabilities such as auto wait and assert retries, can interact with multi-page and multi-tab websites, cross-browser testing, cross-platform testing, supports several different programming languages, speed, Playwright relies on a single WebSocket connection to communicate with all the drivers that stay in place until all tests are finished, and it's open source. And now the cons, I spoke about them briefly before, but let's get into them more now. Cons, because it's still new, the community size isn't as big as other competitors. This may lead to longer times to try to troubleshoot problems. Instead of real devices, it uses a desktop browser to emulate mobile devices during testing. It has limited support for older browsers and doesn't support some programming languages yet, such as c -sharp and Ruby, that other competitors do. And now the question they actually came here for, should you personally be using it? 
Honestly, it depends on the context, your situation, and what you're going to use it for. If it's just you doing independent projects or it's a small startup team, I would definitely give Playwright a try. You saw all the pros. You can't go wrong, especially when you're starting a new project. However, larger companies with tight deadlines may not want to try Playwright. It's not to fault Playwright, but it's just too new. And that aligns with the user community and the community support. And when everything is going perfect, you probably won't care about the user base and the community because everything's fine. But wait, when problems occur and bugs happen, you're going to try to search and troubleshoot what's going on. With Selenium, you'll find a solution probably in a couple of minutes. With Playwright, you might be searching for a couple hours. And that's not a problem if it's just you or a small team doing a project. But if you're a big corporation and you need this done by tomorrow, you have to go with a reliable, efficient method when that's something like Selenium. So as I said, it depends on what you're using it for. Because on paper, Playwright does appear to be better than Selenium. But just because of the user base, people might still use Selenium. And that's it. Let me know how you feel about Playwright and possibly its competitors. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns for future videos, please leave them below. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.